Hi, so in this video what I thought I would do is walk through an actual numerical example of, of Diffie-Hellman. Um, so we'll talk about and do a numerical example of Diffie-Hellman. And I thought this would be very helpful in the context of uh, being able to understand how Diffie-Hellman works at a lower level. Now obviously to do a numerical example, I'm going to be picking values that are small enough that I can do uh, all the critical computation by hand. Now, in practice, uh, you would never actually implement Diffie-Hellman with such small numbers because uh, you, you wouldn't get the level of security that you needed uh, in order to be able uh, to, to use the helmet in any practical sense. So don't uh, use these numbers in practice. This is just meant to help you understand the algorithm by picking small enough numbers that we can actually look at what's going on. And so in the previous video, I actually had done a walkthrough of modular exponentiation with uh, a prime of 13, so a modulus of 13, and a generator g of 2. Uh, and I'm going to use these values in Diffie-Hellman. Uh, as an example. Suppose we have again Alice and Bob. So we have Alice and we got Bob. Okay, and the way that we're going to implement the protocol is as follows. Alice is going to start off and she is going to pick, uh, let's say she picks a random number uh, from 0 to p minus 1. If you recall, that's what happened in the protocol. So she's going to pick a value lowercase a uh, between, in this case, it's going to be uh, 0 and 12 because p minus 1 is 12. And let's say in this case, the number A she happens to pick is 5. Okay? So she's going to send up G to the A, uh, which you're calling uppercase A, mod P, to Bob. And in this case, G to the A is basically, G is, is going to be 2. Um, and so she's going to be sending up 2, and A is lowercase A is 5, so 2 to the 5th mod. In this case, the the prime that, that we're going to be doing a modulus, the, the prime that's being used as the modulus is 13. And so the result is 2 to the 5th mod 13. Uh, and, uh, you know, we actually computed that. That's 2 to the 5th is 32. Uh, and then uh, 32 uh, mod 13 uh, is going to be equal uh, to 6. Right? So she's going to then send. So this is actually just equal to 6. So Bob is going to get the value A equals 6 here. Okay, and what is Bob going to do? Well, Bob in turn will compute his own uh, his own value. So let's say Bob computes and let's say he, he picks a lowercase b value. B, again, he's going to pick this from 0 to p minus 1. In this case, p minus 1 is 12. Okay, and let's say, for example, in this case, he picks b equal to uh, 7. Okay, so now um, uh, he's going to compute capital B, which is equal to G to the lowercase b mod P. Okay, in this case, uh, G is 2, and then lowercase b uh, is 7. And so uh, he's going to pick 2 to the 7 mod P. Uh, and actually, in this case, we're going to just so place P in this case was 13. Uh, and so 2 to the 7th mod 13, we already computed that in the previous video, that's equal to 11, right? Okay. And he's going to compute, so b equals 11, he's going to send that to Alice. Okay, now the real question is, um, what is, so let, let's see if this works out. Alice has to compute, and she gets uppercase b, and she computes b to the a, okay, mod p. Now in this case, b is 11. We can also think of b as 2 to the 7th, right? Um, since it was we computed here, 2 to the 7th um, mod p. And then she's going to raise that to the 8th power, and a is 5. Okay, so she gets 2 to the 35th mod p, or in this case, mod 13. And, and similarly, if, if, if Bob kind of carries out uh, his own version of the protocol, um, he is going to compute A to the lowercase b, uh, which in fact is equal to, uh, and remember A was equal to 2 to the 5th, and then lowercase b was 7, um, and then so we get here uh, 2 to the 35th mod p. Um, 13 in this case, because p is 13. As you can see, it, it kind of it all works out. And now the question is, what is uh, 2 to the 35th mod p? 
and I'm going to show you a little trick here to being able to compute this. So um, 2 to the 35th is actually, that's equal to 2 to the 32 times 2 squared times 2 to the 1. And you can, you can see this by when you multiply exponents with a common base, the exponents add, and, and you can easily verify that, that uh, 32 plus 2 plus 1 uh, it's equal to 35, so you can see that we're, we're talking about 2 to the 35th here. And so given that, um, what is 2 to the 32? Well, 2 to the 32, that's actually 2 to the 2 to the 5th, because 2 to the 5th is 32, okay, times 2 squared times 2. Uh, this is all mod p. Uh, and what's that equal to? And we're gonna, um, we'll work that out, actually. So 2 to the 2 to the 5th, that's 11 mod 13, and so we multiply that by uh, 2 squared, which is 4 mod 13, and then you multiply that by 2. So now we get uh, 11 times 4 times 2, which is 88, and we want to do 88 mod 13. So what is uh, 88 mod 13? Um, and, and we can, uh, you know, we can do that in many different ways, but let's, uh, let's just divide out to see what we get. So let's put 13 into 88, okay? And so um, uh, we'll try six here, so we get 15, six and seven, and we get 10, so it's remainder of 10. And so we have a remainder of 10, and so 88 mod 13 is, is 10 because we get the remainder of 10 when we divide 88 by 13, that's the definition of, of mod. And so the shared secret that Alice and Bob will have come up with in this case is the value 10. Hopefully that made some sense. Um, you know, the keys that I want to uh, emphasize here, um, and, and this is, again, if you want to try to understand Diffie-Hellman better, um, what you can try to do is, is just run through these same computations I did, but see if you can do them a bit differently. I mean, for example, you know, I actually computed, in this case, b to the a by doing 2 to the 7 to the 5th to get 2 to the 35th, but I could have also tried to say, well, what would happen if I did 11? raised to the fifth power uh, mod p, or mod 13 in this case. Uh, and, and you can, again, you can see that this would have, uh, you, you could have used an approach like this to figure that out, and, that, and it would have worked. Uh, and likewise, uh, you could have, uh, and, and you would have actually seen that you would end up with uh, 10 mod 13, and you, you can work this out, and you pull out a calculator and just check it out. Uh, and likewise, you could also verify that um, you know, I could have done 6, a to the b, and I could have done that as 6 to the 7th. And again, you could try to verify that 6 to the 7th mod 13 is equal to 10 mod 13, or just 10. Um, and so again, always kind of spot check calculations, try to do them in different ways that will kind of help with uh, building your overall intuition and understanding. Uh, the last thing that I do want to point out, and it, you know, I had this value 2 to the 35th, and this looked like, oh my god, what, what a big number here to you know, compute is a power of 2 mod 13. But what I was able to do is use this trick where I computed 2 to the 35th by basically multiplying three different powers of 2. And so all I need to do, you know, and it turns out you can take anything and you can express it um, uh, in terms of powers of 2. So you can take any value and you can express it as a sum of powers of 2. Um, in fact, that's what computers do when they talk about doing uh, base 2 arithmetic. Um, and if, if you do that, you can then in turn um, if you want to compute an exponentiation, it turns out that if you just have the powers of 2 essentially pre-computed, which you can actually do pretty easily, because once you've got a single power of 2, you can get the next one by multiplying that, um, effectively squaring the, the previous power of 2 to get the next power of 2. Um, if you have just the powers of 2, you can always multiply a subset of these guys together to get the, the final answer. And so really, it turns out that um, you can do some very efficient computation via a trick. And this trick, in general, is known as um, repeated squaring, repeated squaring, and I'll actually, um, if I get time, maybe I'll make a video that explains how repeated squaring works in some more detail, but it turns out that it, it's a very useful trick to know. It's actually necessary um, in the context of Diffie-Hellman because it allows you to um, really compute the, uh, the values in the Diffie-Hellman protocol much more efficiently. Repeated squaring is also used in other algorithms like RSA, so it's a cool trick that's worth knowing. Um, but you know, for suffice it to say, for now, I think to understand Diffie-Hellman conceptually, you don't need to understand repeated squaring. But if you were to actually implement it in practice, 
uh, you would definitely need to know about repeated scoring because otherwise it would be too slow for the Goofy Hellman. Anyway, I will stop here and um, maybe I'll, I'll make some more videos on this topic, but I hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks a lot and I will talk to you soon.